we're ready to do some decorative effects. So my base coat is acrylic cake shell. This is 00801, which is a grey. I've masked up an area for each of my effects. I'm going to do ragging on, ragging off, dragging and sponging. So I'm just going to show you all in effect. If you just come over here, I've used a low tack masking tape along here and that is because I'm on a painted surface. If I was to use the standard masking tape like this, it's a bit too sticky so it would pull the face of the paint off. So we don't want to do that. So that's all masked off ready just so I can do these demonstrations for you. So. We're using Scumble Acrylic Glaze. That is our base coat. And acrylic, as you remember, is water-based. So once it's mixed with the pigments, like this, they become Scumble. But for some reason on this, it says original Scumble. But it's not Scumble until you've actually put pigment in. So I'm gonna mix enough for the actual demonstration, so. Nicely, it goes quite far. I'm working over a radiator at the moment, so I'm kind of conscious of the fact that it might dry a bit quicker. So, but I'm going to do the demonstration quite quick. What I will be doing though, if I was doing this in sort of a, a proper setting um, and I wanted it to dry quick, then what I'd do is I would add some. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding blue and red. You're okay to walk past. Got a delivery. Um, just need some for it. Plus, I can show up inside of it, which you guys are. Is everything done that end? Doing one, one, one. So I've got my acrylic. Sorry. So I've got my acrylic glaze in here. Let me take a look at that. That's my glaze. Now, it, it is sort of transparent rather than translucent. Okay. When it's on the surface, you can see straight through it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix red and blue, and hopefully you all know what colours you get when you mix red and blue. That's right, purple. Purple. So I'm going to have a good dollop of this red. And a good dollop of this blue. Now these are universal pigments. That means they go in either oil or water-based scumbles, glazes, whatever you want to call them. So I'm gonna give that a mix. Ooh, lemon dark. Beautiful. Right, that's a dark, dark purple. Maybe I should have gone a bit lighter. See what that would look like if it was on a white surface. Hey you guys! How you doing? So what I've got here, it looks really dark in the kettle, but it's actually a really nice purple. Okay, you can just see I've just rubbed it on the side of there and you can see the purple colour and that's what I was going for. Okay. So the first one I'll do, I'll do ragging off. So what I've got to do there is I've got to pour some of my glaze into my tray. Don't need loads for this, it's going to be plenty. I've made absolutely loads. And I'm going to do, because I don't have anywhere, oh I do actually, I have a little bit of cutting in to do at the top. Never mind, I'll roll up to it. Get my flock roller. This is a flock roller. This is sponge inside and it's flock coated. And the reason you use a flock roller is so that you don't get bits in the glaze. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this onto the area. Just going slightly over my masking tape here. And because I've pressed it down at the edges, I should get a really nice crisp edge. If I am pressed down at the edges, I get what's called creep, and that's where the pin seeps under the edge of the masking tape. 
and then what happens is you don't get a nice straight line, you get like a wiggly line. Wiggly, wiggly. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to put it on as even as I can to start off with. Conscious of working a little bit quicker because I'm above a radiator. Paints dry a lot slower in cold, when the atmosphere is cold. When it's warm, they dry a lot quicker. So especially on this radiator. I've masked this, this top, so don't worry if you're not making, not just blathering it, it's the same colour as the top. Right, the masking tape. Like that. Now I'm getting it as even as I can with the roller. Then, because I want to get it evener still, I'm going to stipple it with this block stipple, and that is basically just like that on the surface. And what you're doing there is you're taking out roller marks, so you're just tapping it on the surface, getting rid of them roller marks. Slightly see them, but they're, they're becoming a little bit less noticeable. Now you've got to this point you've got a more even surface. This then obviously has got pigment all over it. So this, because we're using a water-based glaze, it needs washing in just a soapy solution. If you just try and wash it in water, the pigment won't come out with bristles. So just make sure that you wash it all out so there's no pigment left in there. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Right, now this is the ragging off method. What you need is a lint-free cloth. Now your lint-free cloth wants to be damp. So I've put this in some cold water and I'm just going to squeeze it out as dry as I can. Right. This cloth, because it's lint-free, it doesn't have fibres, it doesn't give off bits. So, a little bit there. So it's good for when you're rag rolling because it doesn't put bits in the surface. Now, if you was watching the PowerPoint the other day and I said you've got to sort of just bunch it up and it's basically, I just drop it in my hand like that. No uniform to it whatsoever. And that is naturally scrunched. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rag roll it and that is going to, because this cloth's damp, it's going to take some of the glaze off. So, don't matter where you start, it's up to you, but make sure you keep that wrap tucked in. If you end up doing that, you'll just skid all over the surface. Don't have it like a sausage rolled up as well. It has to be a scrunched up ball. So, starting at the bottom, I'm just taking that rag up the surface like this. And as you can see, it's just picking up a little bit of the glaze. Go again scrunch up into a ball because I don't want the same pattern and then so that I get it right up to it I'm going slightly ever so slightly over it like that again scrunch up and we are going to start right at your masking tape because if you start on the glaze you won't get right up to the edge. Another one. So I'm checking I'm not putting like a uniform pattern. I don't want what's called banding. If I get banding, it's going to look pretty, it's not going to look like a really good effect. It needs to be random. 
again. Like this. And try not to skid with it. But you do know that it's got a long open tan. Not so much over this radiator, but it's relatively long open, open time, and that means a glaze doesn't really dry that quick. And if I decided it was going to dry too quick, I could add some glycerine. And glycerine will extend the working time. And what I'll do at the end is when I've done the full panel, I will check for any areas that I think need a little bit more on. Could be near the masking tape, at the top, at the side. And I'll fill them in just by dabbing the rag on the surface in a scrunched up bob. Don't want anything to rush with this. Just take your time. Let's say it's got a long open time. You won't be working above a radiator. You'll be doing this either on your panel outside your cubicle or in an area masked up in your cubicle. So don't feel like you've got to rush it. And if you do make a mistake, you can basically just roll back over it and you can stick with it again. Now, that bit there, feel it needs a bit. There. Like that. I might just, it looks a little bit heavier, I might just roll up that bit there. So it's right on the masking tape. And that there is, let me just stand back and take a look at it. is ragging off. So we'll cut that there and then we'll do, I'll show you ragging on.